Travolting presents The Fraser's Edge. Hosted by Jeff Sweeney and Stuart Elmore. Covering 20 bucks. With special guest, Matt Abal. Stuart. What's up, Jeff? I'm pulling my wallet out right now. I oh, no. I want to. Well, my wallet's up on the desk I'm, right I'm now. I'm opening it up. Yeah. And I'm going to. I think we need a topic for today's discussion. So here, I'm going to. Oh, Jeff's pulling out a. Is this a twenty dollar bill? Yeah, no, it's it's twenty bucks. It's twenty bucks. Yeah, but in one bill. But you ever think about where that that bill has been? Uh, I try the not history to. History of that bill. I try not to, man. <laughs> How much drug money is in America right now? Yes. Um. And that that leads us great to the topic of today's discussion. <laughs> twenty bucks. A movie that has that makes the most compelling argument ever for cashless transactions and credit cards. Kinda. Yeah. If you if you ever have a family or friend who's like. I don't think I need a credit card. I just pay with everything with cash. Just show them this movie, and by the end, they will be at Bank of America signing up for a like low interest <laughs> payment plan. Now, don't get me wrong. Like a lot of, I always try. I try to like put some sentience into this twenty dollar bill. Yes, but then like the, in the fifteen twenty minute mark, you want to immediately reverse back on that because yeah. if this dollar bill had feelings of any kind, it would be, be like, a dist- kill me! <laughs> I was in a fish. I was in a fish. <laughs> what, what's the one where? Oh my god! What was that movie where it's just someone screaming the whole time? Like <laughs> it's Tusk. <laughs> yeah, it's Tusk. It's Tusk. <laughs> it's Tusk. <laughs> Dollar bills don't talk. <laughs> but, but, but you know what this movie is? What is it? This movie is Forrest Gump. If at the beginning of the movie you're following the feather down and you see the guy on the bench and then you just fuck off and continue with the feather. <laughs> That's what this movie what is. What if that was Forrest Gump? He's like, like, my f- mama oh, always said the camera's a fan's away, you never see him again. <laughs> you're like, why is Tom Hanks in that movie for like 10 seconds? And why is Steve Buscemi in this movie for like 10 minutes? Yes. <laughs> oh, but we love him for it. We, but... do, a lot. we do love him for well, it. Well, hi, folks. Welcome to uh, Travolting uh, Presents the, the, the Fraser. Fraser. Edge. edge um and if you, if you couldn't tell we're covering the motion picture 20, 20 bucks, bucks which is a movie probably none of you have heard of I've even not, less of you have seen i've not heard of this movie yes. before watching it um i mean this movie is in, in in great territory of might not exist like i don't i don't really think yeah, this movie has a it's rentable on prime but only in standard definition right the, that's how you know a movie's good <laughs> what excuse me <laughs> is when it's on standard def on amazon prime i want to point out that on imdb it's l- like 20 is written not numbered yes so it's 20 bucks yes. not two zero bucks yes 20 bucks right what's the significance uh what's, maybe it's that that we can't that? just think of things in numbers like ones and zeros and that yeah, it actually can't... has a name yeah it has value and that Get it? it has value as interesting. Folks, if you can't tell, we're gonna we're gonna struggle for compelling <laughs> arguments to make about this movie. Today. Where is w- w- listen? W- where is Linda Hunt? <laughs> you know, where is she? Where is she? Where, where I need more Linda Hunt. Yeah. No. Like we're gonna talk about this, but we're, we're recording two episodes today. This one and the next motion picture, Younger and Younger, which you'll get not you know next Friday. You get next Friday. Next, next Fraser, Fraser Friday. Friday. Um, and Stuart and I were both a little unsettled. By how both of these movies start with a Linda Hunt narration. It has Linda Hunt like, in Like, we're them. afraid that this this podcast is just about to become hunting season, and, like, every movie we watch just has Linda Hunt Linda Hunt. Well, when we get to... Does Brendan Fraser never guest starred in NCIS Los Angeles, did he? Uh, no, he did not. Okay. Well, then oh, shit. She was in NCIS Los Angeles. Yeah, she's, like, the Cuddy. The of, Cuddy? Do you not know the NCIS lore, Jeff? I have Pause never the podcast. Seen an okay, episode. here we go. So you have Jeffro Gibbs, right? Which is like the main. He's it. You watch Chicago PD, right? The, the yes, fa- I've, I've the seen very that. popular TV I've seen show that on TV NBC. Show. Not that you work on it whatsoever. You yeah. just watch. No, it. I've never. You just watch it a lot. So Jeffrey G- Gibbs is like the Hank Voigt of no, the team. No, Jeffrey Gibbs is the guy. Is a uh, Jack Sparrow's first mate. <laughs> This is Jonathan Gibbs. Yeah, this is Jonathan Gibbs. Get your names fucking right. Uh, good actor, by the way. Yeah. Guy who plays Gibbs, but he's not in he's much good. of anything he's else. He's not in 20 bucks. He's not in 20 bucks. He's not in a lot of other things but the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Yeah. 
which is a shame because I honestly think he's a good actor. Yeah. Same with the guy who plays Commodore Norrington. Norrington. That guy has been in other things, but he deserves he to be in a lot. He gets cut in half at the opening of Kingsman. He does get cut in half at the opening of Kingsman. Anyway, though, so, no, like, Jeffrey Gibbs is the Hank Voigt of, you know, the NCIS yes. team. And, you know, they're Navy cops. They investigate military crimes, which is kind of one of those things of, like, the whole show, you have to battle well, Stuart, the ethics. I know that. We watched a movie about this. Yeah, you have to... The ba- General's Daughter. Yeah, right. You have, we have to battle Most the ethics. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, you have to battle the ethics of military policing the military rather than mm. civilian police in the military which you know ncis has been going on for 20 plus seasons so evidently america doesn't have a problem with that because they love jeffrey gibbs and all that yes. stuff but then there's like you know the platt character yes in chicago pd okay yes. i know you watched a little bit of it yes. but like so that is played by there's another character so in NCIS plugging his job called right uh, i don't know what you're talking about i don't i don't i work on like, ma- sure, a whatever. lot of other whatever. different shows yeah, fine so there's another character who plays Cuddy, and she's kind of like the Amy Platt character for, um, for you know Chicago PD. Well, Linda Hunt plays the Cuddy character of the Platt character for NCIS Los Angeles. Yeah. Hey, good, okay, great. great. So, <laughs> all right, great. Just wanted. Do you just, want to know the ultimate crime of Linda Hunt's career? What? 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 I'm now discovering she. Um, I have never played the God of War video games. But she is the narrator for the God of War video games. No shit. And she has narrated every single one of them, except for the new ones. They cut her out. No shit. The ones where he's like fighting. He's got. He killed all the Greek gods, and so now he's fighting like the Norwegian. The, the Norwegian Viking, God. Viking, Viking gods. gods. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, she, they cut her out. She's not in them. It's a shame. It's a damn However, shame. However, she was Lady Proxima in Solo, a Star Wars story, so we do have to stand a legend. And she was Grandmother Willow. Yes, Sit the fuck I know, down. I know. We're like, she's probably really proud of some of the other work she did in her career. And we're just over here like, Lady Proxima, Grandmother Willow. Willow. <laughs> 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Oh my gosh. Wow. That... But yeah, she, she she opens both the movies that we're recording today that you folks are listening to this weekend next week. She is also a narrator in the uh, phenomenal award winning 2002 to 2005 TV miniseries Auschwitz Inside the Nazi, Nazi State. State. <laughs> so, yeah. Good for her. Yeah, she gets work. She does. Yeah. She, she gets work. Um, okay. Elizabeth 20 bucks. Shue the other day. Elizabeth Shue plays Emily. Yeah, folks. You, if, did if you watch you, this? If movie? you like Elizabeth Shue, you should stick around to the end of the episode because we'll be talking about a, a shoe of another sort. Oh no! Yeah. yeah. What was? She? You're, you're. You know. We we just had this discussion. Shoes. Shoes, Elizabeth's shoes. I'm making a joke in here. It's face planting. It's like res- I'm resuscitating it on the table right now. And you're letting it die. I'm not laughing at your joke. I'm uh, laughing at the failure of the joke. Yes. Any, was... Okay, fuck it, whatever. All right. All right, twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Yeah. Um. So the movie this... costed one ninety nine for me to rent. <laughs> uh, two ninety nine for me. You got the HD version. No, I got this. There was only one option. <laughs> I only got the SD standard yeah, deck. You paid one ninety nine. Did, did, did inflation get to twenty bucks in between you watching it yesterday and me watching it today? But perhaps. When will Joe Biden speak on this? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So okay, so this movie. Uh, What's the context, Jeff? What do you con- got for the us? The context. This movie costs twenty. No, twenty so, bucks. This this movie actually has fun context. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie was originally written in nineteen thirty five. Yeah. Which is why it kind of has that kind of like 30s Frank Capra energy to it. Yeah, I feel like that. Like it kind of feels like it would be, you know, you go see, you go to down to the local theater and they'd be showing It's a Wonderful Life this and you can't take it with you. Yeah. And be like, oh, I'd say 20 bucks coming up next. <laughs> that was good. Uh, but this movie never got made. Right. Um, so, and it sat around for 60 years. And then the writer, whose name is An- Andre Bohem. Uh, passed away, and his son discovered the script while going through his belongings after he had passed. And he's like, I love this screenplay. And then my dad wrote, I want to see it, like, you know, get made. You know, on paper, I would say this does have, like, the good qualities of, like, a bare-bones yeah. foundational script. Yes. And I think that is the essence of this. It's a very foundational script. Yeah. Th- this has tremendous, like, my first movie energy to it. Yeah. 
Um, even though I know it isn't for anyone involved. Well, and then we're going to get into who directed this movie. Yes. Which, Kev- Keva, Keva? Keva Rosenfeld. Keva Rosenfeld. Keva Rosenfeld. What else did Keva Rosenfeld do? Well, quickly, I'll just say that the the, the writer of this, uh, he rewrote the script to modernize it for the 90s. Yeah. And then sold it and decided he really wanted to, you know, get this movie made. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it got made, and Kevin Rosenfeld did direct it. Um, whose other, who's only the only other feature film they directed was All American High, um, which is described as an irreverent look at the life of a typical suburban high school. Never heard that pitch before. Right? Yeah. No. Um, yeah, exactly. Well, what's interesting is if you look at Kevin Rosenfeld's uh, IMDb, it goes from uh, All American High. Which is an hour long movie. Yeah. An episode of The Street. An episode of The Street. 20, 20 bucks, bucks. An episode of The Watcher. Watcher. And then and there's then a, a 15 year film, break. A short film. A bunch of short films. And then a bunch of episodes of Unsolved Mysteries. And then another short film. And yeah. So like a lot of breaks. Yeah. A lot of breaks there. A lot of breaks. Well, it looks like they were also, you know, the. Looks like they edited some stuff around. I was like, what do they do in that, those 15 years? They produce some short documentary it looks like they kind of this was their last go at like a feature film Mm -hmm. and they've basically just operated as a you know no uh, i I don't (laughs) because i'm looking at all their jobs they just kind of made short films and occasional tv shows since then must be nice never really popped off in hollywood and then hollywood you know started shrinking it on itself popped off on them yeah popped off on them pop 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 um but yeah this movie gets made with that screenplay with that director it has a pretty impressive cast. It does. Um, for a movie by a relative first time. This is still in that early 90s well, you know, indie boom. Well, Christopher Lloyd, pretty yeah. no- notable. I mean, this cast is just on the, the poster is Linda Hunt, Brennan Fraser, Elizabeth Shue, Steve Buscemi, Christopher Lloyd, Spalding Gray. It's not a lot of people's first films. Yeah, like the, William H. Macy's also in this movie. Yeah. None of these are like heavy hitters, but they're all people who are notable. William H. Macy still in his Sahara era of reporting, yeah. supporting role yeah. season. I mean, that's where most of this cast is right now. Yeah. And it's the indie boom of the 90s. True. So a movie like this kind of just came in at the right time to get made. Yeah. With that kind of cast. Right. Do we have a budget attached to this movie? I could not find a budget attached to this movie. I'm looking for it too, but I can't really find anything. I can see the box office gross, and that's gross. (laughs) We'll talk about that later, though. Yeah. um, Yeah, there's no... I mean, I'm sure if I went to some... Oh, no, here's the box office. Oh, no, that... Yes, the box office, no budget. You just said that. Anyway, okay, this movie got made, and that's the context (laughs) corner. Yeah. Um... Okay. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, just opening thoughts going into it, and we'll talk more at the end. I mean, this wasn't like terrible. It, was it wasn't. Fine. A, it wasn't it was unwatchable. Fine. It's like a. It's like a six out of ten. Yeah, I would say that's pretty accurate. I'd six probably, out of I, I get about six now, out of ten. I will say the good, the great failing of this movie is that I fully lost track of where the twenty bucks was <laughs> at various points. Did you really? At times, I was like, because we would still jump between stories that the twenty bucks was not a part of. That's what we're gonna do. We're, we're gonna make this a declaration on this episode. Yeah. We're gonna keep track of, of the twenty bucks. Of the twenty bucks. I will fail at this because uh, no, I watched the it's movie fine, and it's I fine. failed. Because like, I'm going to fill you in. I'll be yeah. like, okay, pop quiz. Who, who has the $20? You're like, uh, is it the dead dad? Yeah. I'm like, no. no. There's one part where like, I'm like, okay, I understand where the no, 20 is. No, it's in the police are. precinct right yeah, now. I'm like, I understand where this $20 is right it's now. It's inside a fish. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was like. It's in the fucking fish. <laughs> I thought this kid had it. Um, but no. <laughs> we are going to keep track of this. Yes. Well, we're going to do our damnedest. At, at its like most basic core, like I, it is a moderately interesting concept in that like you do wonder where money's been because like it's the most commonly traded object on the earth. It's yeah. Cash money. Right. And you're just like, where does that go? Yeah. A lot of it now is drug money. Yeah. You know, like there's like you know the, there's the, a thing that's like I, mean, I got to Google this where it's like the amount the percentage of the cash that's in circulation in the United States comes from drug money. Yeah. It's pretty insane, actually. You know this up. what the shitty modern version of this movie is called? What? 20 Bitcoin. And it's about tracking like the like it's just from phone to phone. Is that yeah. It's just like you just like you go in the computer and get that Jimmy Neutron effect of like going through the cables and shit. Oh, my God. And you pop out in some like guy's basement and. He's like, all my apes are gone. Uh, 
Sorry, I'm looking yeah. up. Yeah, but you're you're right. You're right. Yeah, that would be like the shitty version. Yeah. I'm not going to look at the whole drug percentage thing because yeah. wording it would be really hard to yes. do. But right. yeah, I, the Bitcoin thing. Yeah, you just like go inside the phone into like the computer yeah. screen and like. You know just... who we haven't even talked about in this episode yet? Brendan, Brendan Fraser. Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> um, who, like, I think we were doing a really good job of tracking his career to this point. Like, there was a logical progression with so everything that it, we did. What, what was it before? It was, well, ta- this is a weird one, right? Because it was school ties, but also Encino Man. Yeah, because like, prior to this, like, he had, like the sequence had been Child of Darkness, Child of Light, Dogfight, um, Guilty Until Proven Innocent, Encino Man, School Ties. Which he did School Ties first, yeah. and then Encino Man, but Encino Man was released before yes. School Ties. And so, like, he's he, he's in a very logical progression at that point. Yeah, I well, okay, explain. Like everything's making sense for his career. Like, you know, he did the extra role, mm-hmm. did a small one-liner, mm-hmm. got a lead on the TV show, mm-hmm. and then he got two lead roles in movies. Yeah, one one very... a comedy, one a drama. Yeah. The okay. comedy was more successful. Mm-hmm. And then it's like it's harder to track now. Cuz now he's like a name. Yeah, he's a name. He's got no Oscars, no Golden Globes, no Emmys, but he's got a name. He's a name people recognize. Yeah. But he's still very early in his career and he's still probably working for money. Like he can't say no to projects. True. Within reason. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense then. So it's things like this. It makes and younger and younger make a lot more sense. This and younger and younger, <laughs> like he can still do these types of movies, but it's not where like Logically, his career should be like leading man roles now. Yeah, and that may be the difference between you know a particular other actor we talked about. Yeah. Whereas I don't feel like Brendan Fraser is like pushing so yeah. hard for those solely and, leading man and roles. This movie makes a lot more sense than Younger and Younger in that respect. Yes, because this is like you know people liked anthology movies in the nineties. There's like this and Four Rooms. I miss and the anthology movie era. Yeah, people, don't you? People like anthology. People like to make anthology movies in the nineties. Yeah, and so it makes sense. Like, oh, I only have to work for like. 15 days, maybe. Yeah. If that. Right. 15 days, and I get to be a part of this, like, anthology thing. That sounds fun. Yeah. Which I'm, I'm sure why a lot of actors got involved in this movie. Right. Um, younger, younger and younger is its own thing that we'll talk about when we get to it. That's a very puzzling one. Yeah. But this one, I feel like, you know, it, you it's hard to tie a lead to any point. Yeah. But I would say that if there was anybody in question, Brendan Fraser is definitely like in the conversation. He is ostensibly the lead of this movie only because he is in it a lot. It's in the beginning. He's, he he's has the first a, person you see. A few things in the middle, and then he's in the final image. Yes. So, yeah. And then there's Emily Shue. Yes, who Elizabeth Shue. Elizabeth playing Sh- Emily. Em- Emily, right. Well, that just goes to show. Yes. Um... um so did we just want to like dive into the plot of this one? Sure. Um, Plots, plural. Pl- pl- yeah. Um, so I mean, the first thing is, you know, we 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 start off with a montage of yeah. New York City. We're in New York, right? We are in New York. And wait, no, Minneapolis. We're in Minneapolis. Oh, we're in Minneapolis. <clears throat> yes. Fuck me. <clears throat> I'm already getting this wrong. Um, okay, so we're in Minneapolis, and we start with a montage of like all the different city streets and bustling city life. And yeah. We also get introduced to Linda, ha- L- Lin- I almost said Linda Hamilton. Uh, Linda Hunt. <laughs> Imagine if it was Linda Hamilton with the Terminator theme song. Yeah. There is no fate but what we make for ourselves. Like, my oh son, my John God. Connor, the savior of the universe, <laughs> like, the $20 bill. <laughs> It's about a twenty dollar bill in a post apocalyptic world, <laughs> and then it, like because there's gonna be a cool match cut where it like yeah. lands on like a sidewalk, and then it match cuts to skulls. Yeah, and the lighting's all dark. Yeah, it's, it's like thunderstorms, <laughs> laser beams. You see the Terminators. Yes, the T T eight hundred. And then camera from the twenty dollar bill pans up. It's Christian Bale as yeah. John Connor. No, <laughs> he's like he's like beating the shit out of Scaffer, and he's like, "Boy, you put that fucking light." <laughs> oh man, good call, good call yeah. there, Stuart. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay, so 
It's Minneapolis. Linda Hunt. Yes, and there's a twenty dollar bill blowing around. About she's, like, she's saying some shit about twenty dollar bills and shit. Well, she like is it something to do with like the passing moments in her lives or some shit like that? Like, I cannot for the life of me remember what. The I this also movie is. cannot for the life of me remember what she says in that opening model. All I remember is that we're following this twenty dollar bill as it floats around. Well, and we're not even following the twenty dollar bill, right? Because we start and then we end land on a yes. cash truck. Yes. That goes and loads into an ATM and it's all brand new money. Yeah. And a twenty dollar bill. And that is we of. get the birth. Yeah. Of the twenty dollar bill. Yeah. Jeff, it, do you see ATM slots like fallopian tubes? <laughs> and it goes like they open a farce come the bill starts floating through the air. Oh my god. Because that, episode five. Epi- or episode six. That is the birth of this yes. L D four. 40, we 39, see the full 42. lifespan of this fucking twenty dollar bill. <laughs> yeah, just get get bored get from this murdered ATM by the end. Because this lady, uh, d- you know, withdraws some cash and she loses her twenty dollars. Yeah. Now I don't know about you, Jeff. Yeah. If, I, if a twenty dollar bill went swooping to the air from the ATM, I'd be like, Meh, whatever. It's fucking twenty dollars. Inflation's crazy these days. Yeah. I'm gonna go chase for that shit. Yeah. She, this lady doesn't do that. She's a no name actually. You know who does though? Linda Hunt. Linda Hunt, who plays. A bag lady. Yes. Homeless woman. Yes. Crazy person. Named Angeline. Named Angeline. She sees it. And some she bu- starts chasing after her and she's fighting some like group of hooligan skateboarders. Yeah. Ugh. This movie has like uncut gems energy <laughs> at the start. It's got like <laughs> where like this heavy paced music. It's like Linda Hunt fighting kids all trying to get this twenty dollars. Running around. Beating the shit. Some yeah. kids on she the street. She gets the twenty and she runs away with it. And then a biker swoops by or a skateboarder swoops by and snatches it out of her hand. Yeah. And then this punk kid goes into like a bakery, a coffee She's shop. She's like, oh, fuck. She goes, fuck. L- L- see, Linda Hunt gives- Brings this movie from a PG to an R. Right away in the first yeah. five minutes. This movie is generally fair. I mean, there's there's a nude woman in it, so that would have also done the trick. Yeah. Um, and so- yeah, she's like, ah, oh, I have the $20, and the lucky numbers are, and she's like, I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket. Ha ha! That's kind of how Linda Hunt's, like, yes. playing this role, more or less. And then, yeah, the skateboarder snatches it stuff. Well, and then it, like, it blows, like, on, you know, onto a, I don't know. It travels a few different ways, but, yeah, it eventually gets to the bakery. Yes. There's a get- lot. We're, when we pass off this $20, folks, you have to understand that there is a lot of no-name extras that get this $20, yes. and then it bounces around, passes around until we get yeah. to our actor yeah, who has the actor who The actor's... The, what, His I, life I, we're actually going to focus on. I read that this movie was originally written entirely as like a series of vignettes. It, what, like they it, would, it, The stories would never overlap. Mm. The rewrite by The Sun in the 90s is what caused them to overlap. Made the movie worse. Yeah, because like originally it's just gonna made be like, twenty dollar mo- winds up with this person. We follow their story. Their story ends. Dollar bill goes to the next person. Made the movie worse, personally. Yeah, you would rather just had a bunch of little stories. Absolutely, it makes it harder to follow. Like I said, when we get to the Christopher Lloyd, Steve Buscemi, you tell me. Yes, <laughs> you fucking tell me <laughs> if you want overlapping bits of the story. No, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, that is the best part of this movie. Well, no, there is another best part of this movie, okay. which I'm going to get into. Okay. It's the one thing from the first five minutes when I saw this dollar bill, I had one expectation for it. And when we get to that moment, yeah. I'm going to tell you. And I just, I laughed in my bed watching yes. this movie. I was like, yes, <laughs> they did it. Anyway, we'll get to that in a moment. So this, it's at this bakery. Yes. And the, uh, like the, the French baker tucks it in his like jacket or yeah. whatever he's wearing, his apron. Yeah. And then this um, this guy walks in and says, I'm here to see the cake. Yeah. And the baker brings him back, and there's some problems with the cake. The guy's there with his young the, daughter. It's like a porcelain. The porcelain figures aren't on it's it. It's a wedding the, cake. The cake looks beautiful, and yeah, there's a young daughter, the older... Uh, Anna, Anna Holiday. Anna Holiday, right, because they're The dad's from, name is Jack Holiday. Well, uh, yeah, they're immigrants from... Persia? Persia or something like that, but yeah. they changed their last name to Holiday. Selma Hayek. It is not Selma Hayek. I thought it was Salma Hayek, but it is not. All right. It was... Um, All right. SJWs just yeah, kill me it now. Was, <laughs> it was Shora Agdashlu. I deserve to die for that sin. Who... Um, I deserve to die. She is... I mean, she's in a lot of stuff, but the things I think you would know her for, she's like the doctor in X-Men The Last Stand. Oh, Do you remember how there's like yeah. the doctors with Angel's dad? Hello, Renora Charles. 
Christmas. Yeah. The one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No. 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 Not that one. No. No. Not it's the like, brain dead doctor no, girl? No, because that's supposed to be more of Oh, no, 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 It's just no, the one no, who no. gets porcupine. She's the one that gets porcupine. Yeah, by the porcupine. Got guy. it. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Not Selma Hayek. No, it's not Selma Hayek. It is, uh, I know who you're talking about. She's is also it? in Star Trek Beyond. And she's also in um, uh, space TV series from sci-fi that went to Amazon Prime. Uh, 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 uh. The Expanse. The Expanse. She's in the Expanse. Yes, 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 yes. She's in The Expanse. She's pretty good. She's the voice of Gozer in Ghostbusters Afterlife. I don't apparently. know anything about that, but she's good in The Expanse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, yeah, Jack Holiday, Anna Holiday, they're looking at this wedding cake. Oh, it's missing porcelain figures. It's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, we can change that. They do cost an extra hundred and thirty yes. some dollars. So, they got the you know the dad pulls out his wallet, puts some change. He's like, here's this. He's like, okay, so for change, here's a ten, a five, and a twenty. Yeah, he goes on the twenty. <laughs> the dad now has this twenty dollars in his pocket. Yeah, we are now we with the then holidays. Meet. Brendan Fraser. We then cut to playing Sam. Yes, who works at like a loading dock. What's his last name, Jack? Mastruski. Mastruski. You just pulled that right out. It's I know you I have probably it have it on in... my screen. I, you know, you do. Um, we... there's a incredibly detailed Wikipedia plot summary for this. Good for you. That has a warning at the top. This is this article's plot summary may be too long or excessively detailed. Please help improve it by <laughs> removing unnecessary details but what and that, making it more concise. But what they September don't know. 2015. <laughs> but what they don't know is that a podcasters are going to use this yes, to help us guide us later. through. Meanwhile, I'm raw dogging this because I do not have a computer screen yes. in front of me. Oh, I, we, we forgot the important detail. <laughs> right after we said we're using a Wikipedia article. Well, I, I'm I'm now reading this Wikipedia article. What 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 is it? They, what um, Linda Hunt at the beginning she reads some numbers. Th off. I said that did already. You? I did. She said she reads the numbers and it's like that seems like lucky numbers. It seems like it's almost fate. I'm gonna buy a lottery ticket with that these seems numbers. Seems like lucky numbers. Where's John? Shut the fuck um, up, Lisa Kudrow. Get but, out. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we're with Sam Mastruski, um, Brendan Fraser. Yeah. He's and working at a plant of some yeah, kind. Yeah, he like he he hauls shit around. Blue collar guy. He, he bounces between blue collar jobs, is what he's established as. Yeah, car pulls up. It's Anna and Jack. Yes. And he goes up, kisses Anna. They're yeah. obviously engaged, if yes. not about to get married. We've established this. Yeah. And his friends are all like, "How'd you marry into this family?" Because he's a blue collar guy and he's marrying into a rich family. Right. Um. So we then basically just cut to their what, like their rehearsal dinner or whatever. Yeah, doing. I. I, I really don't think there's anything in between. I think yeah. we do just cut straight to the we wedding. We basically cut to the rehearsal dinner. It's not the yeah. wedding. It's like the rehearsal dinner or like a prep dinner or something. Right. And they show like a uh, uh, PowerPoint of photos yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I got members of both families there. Yeah. And then Jack gets up and does a speech. Yeah, where he talks about how when he immigrated to the U.S. He, he transferred his money into a bank. Yeah, and he was had his um, he got, foreign money transferred into U.S. dollars, and he got a twenty dollar bill. And that's right. all he had to his name. And he said, you know, a lot of other immigrants, you know, they think of like the Statue of Liberty, the Empire State Building, they have all these things, but for him, that singular symbol of like he's now become a true American is that twenty dollar bill. Yeah. Because this movie is built out of the 90s runaway capitalism. Right. So he takes out that $20 bill, the same $20 bill that the baker yeah. gave him, and he gives him, and I'm giving this, bestowing this $20 bill to yeah. you. Uh, I consider it a wedding gift. Yeah. And and, I'm, and Sam immediately like, gets pissed. He's like, he's like, you're a millionaire. You're only giving me 20 bucks. She doesn't say that. But, yeah. But like. He's taken out to his bachelor party. Afterwards. Yeah, they kidnap him from the yeah. rehearsal dinner. To bring him to the bachelor party. Good old... Which is what I hope you do. Um, you want to be kidnapped? I always think that was like an old school thing. Like, will you hire fake... But oh, I'm going to tell you something off air. Okay, tell me something off air. Okay. Um, but you got to remind me, please. Yes, I I'll forget. remind you. Okay. Okay. So, yes. Um, the he gets kidnapped from the rehearsal dinner. And he's taken to the bachelor party. And he's like, I can't believe this guy's money. He'll give me 20. I'm like, if I was in this situation, I would presume I'm going to get more money when I get married. I'm not going to assume I'm only getting $20. 
I'm sorry. The dad's I, making a point. The, the, He's yeah. telling a story, <laughs> Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, the only thing I'm caught up on is the fact that he has a friend named Buddha. <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, we got to talk this, about this guy. We got to talk about this giant guy. ass man with a beard and long hair. Don't look at me, Jeff, sweetie. <laughs> yeah. so, and yeah. he's like, oh, and he literally talks like this, brother. Yeah, no, he's, the actor he's played by is named Bubba Baker. <laughs> <laughs> plays Buddha. I looked this man up. Bubba Baker plays Buddha. Yeah. Um, he is, IMDb has him listed, you know, in a lot of like roles like this. He plays like biker. He plays a Klansman in Bad Boys 2. Of course. Um, but he's in like a lot of random stuff like that. But he also has credits as a key grip. No shit. Which only for the, the audience at home, if you don't know what key grip is, they're head of the grip department in film. They like shape the light is yep. the descriptor of it. Um, but I can only presume with that information that he was just a key grip who was on some, who's on movies. And someone's like, bro, we got to put you in front of the camera. You look crazy, man. What was the movie where they like needed more gangsters, so they just hired the Teamsters? We, we, we talked about this in a Travolta movie at Did some we? point. Yeah, i almost positive I'm there was like a movie where it's like they just hired some Teamsters. I, I have vague memories of this happening. Yeah, but I don't remember yeah, what movie it was for. What? But regardless, like this guy, my, I I'm under the imp- I kind of I obviously this guy doesn't have like a biography out. We there. work a few jobs these days where some of our fellow pe- production assistants get pulled to be like drug dealers, yeah, <laughs> and stuff. So you know, it's not out of the ordinary, yeah, that this happens. But Buddha, Buddha. <laughs> at this party, at this party, he's like, oh, I got a surprise yeah, for you there, he opens brother. The door and the stripper cream is gonna out. rise to the top, uh, brother. <laughs> he does kind he does kind of talk like macho <laughs> a little bit, uh, and the, he brings a stripper in, yeah. And she goes into the bathroom to change. Yeah. And Fraser's like, I don't know if this is a good idea. And he's like, no, it'll be fun. And then she and so comes Bo- out. Bo- no, Buddha goes in the bathroom with her and is like, how much we agree on? And it's like $100. $100. Um, and I take my shirt off, another 50 and the G-string comes off, and like she just kind of lists things. And then another $50, and it's whatever your friend wants yeah. to do. It's like the more green, the more The scene. more seen is yeah. what she says. Yeah. And so she comes out, and she has a boom box, and she plays music and like the weirdest dancing. the weirdest music for it's the very movies. strange it's a very strange this, this bachelor party is just very strange it's very weird she this bachelor like, party is literally six dudes very awkward it's six dudes in a silent apartment dudes with of the bachelor party slinger. universe please yeah. answer this question for me on our comments what is it with the whole where do you think the appeal is going to be of hiring a single stripper and you six dudes are going to try to ha- hide your rock solid brick boners yeah. in front of each other okay. while this lady has like music on is dancing in front of you like I don't understand awkward, the appeal incredibly awkward I don't understand the appeal behind it if yeah. you want thing, if you got like one girl for each guy then maybe but yeah. it's like the whole process There's of like, like one girl yeah like it just it just makes her uncomfortable, makes all the guys uncomfortable. Yeah, no one's happy in this. Yes, no one's happy in the situation. Who does this? And they're just sitting around in a silent apartment. Otherwise, yeah. Um, so that's all very strange. That's all very very strange. Um, I think the um, God, I just oh, I do want to point out like a bit of detail in this movie. Yeah. Um, which goes off of what you just said. Oh no. So like one of the guys while she's dancing is just like I'm getting a Woody. <laughs> If you look, they put a bulge in his pants. Oh, no. It's like it's sticking up. Oh, my God. They committed. They, they committed said if this man's going to say he's got a Woody, we got to make sure he's having one in the movie. What well, do you think that was an on the day thing? Or do you think like... it was just all natural? <laughs> do you think it was method acting? <laughs> Probably. Um, uh, so then there's, you know, she yeah. starts dancing right yeah. on top of Sam. Yeah. And of and course, his. He's trying to like resist, but eventually gets into it. And is like, you can take that twenty dollars. You put it wherever you want. He sticks the twenty dollars yeah. that his future father-in-law gave him. Yes, inside her thong. Yes, and then there's a knock at the door, and they're like, "Who is it?" Room Rude service. as hell to interrupt a bachelor party. Yeah. By the way, well, like, he's... I don't care if you're not doing anything illicit or illegal or something that could be considered as cheating, but the, you just don't go to your man's bachelor party. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Sorry, maybe you're getting heated. Well, you know, not that we're going to have to plan one very soon, but... Yeah, not that you have to... In case we do. Yeah, in case you do Make it very fucking clear. (laughs) (laughs) Make it some rules. (laughs) Make it some rules here. Well, like, you're Uh, not going to interrupt the, like, the, you know, bachelorette party. Yeah, of course not. So why would she interrupt yours? Yeah. Makes no sense. Stuart, plan a better bachelor party for me than what what is going going on in this movie. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely will. This bachelor party is so bad, it destroys a relationship and calls off a wedding in this movie. Uh, yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Prefer not but that. But Anna shows up. Yeah. And, like, all the guys... Like, a remarkable response time, all things considered. Yeah, they're they all do like, show, oh! 
They shove, shove her in, in the bathroom, bathroom with Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> with... And then they manage to clear up all the beer and set up a card table, a card game. In like 30, in like 30 seconds, seconds flat. flat. The bros. It's the, all these, the bros. These guys are literally the Robert bro. De Niro's team from Heat, where it's like, yeah. do not be afraid. Do not have hesitation to walk out on anything in 30 seconds flat if you feel the heat coming around the corner. And they feel the heat. They feel the heat. Uh, <laughs> But they all bros, and they all stick yeah. up for each other, yeah. so they all make it happen. And, of happen. course, she comes in, and she's like, oh, oh what's going on here? And she's like, this is what a bachelor party looks like. And I'm like, it's she like, prob- no- she would have been less suspicious if she walked in and found the stripper there. Honestly. Because she would have been like, okay, this adds up. Yeah. And since so she walks in, they're like playing car. Buddha's like fucking hammered, wearing like a jean jacket. Like He's like, yeah, got an ace of sevens or something. <laughs> And they're like, yeah, so, you know, I wanted to talk to you about the whole, like, my dad's speech of the $20, yeah. and I want you to know that it's like, obviously, that's not all the money's going to give. It's like, oh, I knew that. Yeah. It's like, no, but I understand. It's like, you know, it was a, it's just an important thing to make a point. By the way, you still have the $20, yeah, right? which is very obvious Un- to anyone who watched <laughs> this movie or otherwise attended that party that there was not just only going to be $20. Right. Well... Maybe he's cheap. Yeah, like very obviously, like if I was in that situation, I'd be like, okay, he's making a point about giving me the twenty dollars, accepting me, and then after we get married, we'll share income. Right. Boom! Whoa! whoa crazy craziness. Crazy. So at that point in time, the guy in the bathroom with the strippers, like, can you like crawl out the window? It's like yeah. that's another fifty. Yeah. Um, and he's like, oh really? It's like yes. <laughs> <laughs> she goes out the window. And she's trying to crawl down the fire. She escape. realizes she left her boombox inside, and so she climbs back up in the window, in between Anna and Sam. Opens the window, yeah. crawls in the apartment. Yeah. And it's like, I'm sorry, I forgot my boombox. I can't work without it. <laughs> yeah, and she grabs the boombox. And it's like, and by the way, sorry, I hope this I hope this helps, but here's the t- twenty dollars. Pulls it out of her thong yeah, and hands. It it's back. like Anna looking disgusted at Sam. It's like, I fucking knew it. Yeah. And then just walks she out. She leaves. leaves. The relationship. And like, oh, oh, it was our the dude's trying to be bros. Yeah. Like, oh, no, you had nothing to do with it. It was all my idea. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Buddha's really working overtime to sell tri- this. Really trying. Yes. Really trying. But, no, she uh, she leaves, and then the stripper still keeps the 20 Again, and leaves. Don't go to your man's fucking bachelor party. It solves everything. Anyway. Mm-hmm. And I don't agree with the whole, like, whoa, it's a bachelor party, so all hand, you know, yeah. you know, all bets are off on what you do. No, 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 no. Cheating is still cheating. I do agree with that. But it's also, like, come on. Let the bros be bros. Let the mm-hmm. Let the gals be gals. Like, yeah, am I, is this like old fashioned thinking, Jeff? Or is it? Is I think it's old fashioned. No, I don't think it's old fashioned thing to not attend each other's things. The bachelor party on display in this movie is old fashioned thinking. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yes. Uh, so she, you know, the stripper takes the twenty dollars still because yes. they don't take it back. Yes. And then there she she goes to a, a like a tarot reader. Like a yes, okay, yes, yes, yes. To a, a ter- like a psychic yeah, fortune, psychic. She goes to a psychic. fortune teller, and she's like buying crystals and some yeah, and shit. She, and she uses and the twenty stuff. to pay for it, and she looks over a glass and some kids look and it's like ah, and like ah, it's like well, the, the kids the, think I'm the a psych- witch. Yeah, yeah. And so the psychic has the twenty now. We never yeah. see the stripper again. Yeah. Uh, the psychic goes to a coffee shop. Yeah. And who walks in? Jeff? I thought she paid with the twenty. But no, I, I was a little confused about this. Yes, this, as well. this is where I started this, to lose track. There, there's a little bit of like sleight of hand tricks. She's going in there. On. She's in and there. And she's writing a card. And then Steve Buscemi. And she has an envelope. Yes, I yes. remember this. And Steve Buscemi walks in as well. There is no handoff in this moment, ladies and gentlemen. There is, but it's not the way you think. Wh- yes. Because you think like she pays She's for, for it something with the 20. And then it goes in the register. Yeah, because Elizabeth Shue is the barista. No shit. Did I miss yes. that part? Elizabeth Shue is the barista. The, the newspaper journalist that we meet yes. at the very end? No oh, shit. I forgot. Not the, the newspaper like writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, sor- the David short Schwimmer. story writer. With David Schwimmer. Yeah, uh, David Schwimmer, America's, She's the barista? America's least actor actor. Um, <laughs> you don't fucking talk shit about David Schwimmer. I'll come across the table and <laughs> beat your ass. <laughs> um, but no, it is Elizabeth Shue. Watch the people versus OJ. Listen to all the 30,000 times he says, Juice. <laughs> juice is loose. He calls him Juice. Oh, Juice. Because mm-hmm. he's, um, ki- he's a he's like Kardashian, yeah, David Robert Kardashian, Car- Robert, Robert Kardashian. Kardashian. Um, so he calls OJ Juice all the time. Yes, great. It's very funny. It is very funny. Okay, so like the sequence. My of- sandwich. You can't you you can't disagree with the my sandwich bit from Friends, Jeff. I've never seen an episode of Friends. Um, so that's fine. 
the Elizabeth Shoe is the barista. Steve Buscemi walks in. Yes. And the witch is at the at the, the bar. To be clear, ladies and gentlemen, what we just described in terms of the money handoff did not happen. Yes. She does not actually pay for her yeah. coffee with a 20. We'll yeah. get to the why later. Well, Steve Buscemi starts like trying to hit on Elizabeth Shoe. Yeah. And he um, says, hey, like, can I get a... He pays for something and a then he... coffee. I got lost in how he did this, but he somehow like... So I've tricks heard her. this... I've heard of this trick before. Yeah. It's where it's like you pay for something small and it's like, yeah, that'll be 75 cents. It's like, okay, I thought I had some change around here. It's like, oh shit, no, I only have like uh, 75 cents. So it's like, oh, I guess I only have a 10. And then you like hand a 10, but then you like do a sleight of hand trick where you grab the 10 away and it's like, oh, actually, you know what? I do have 75 cents. Here's 75 cents. Could I have the $10 back? And yeah. they give you the $10 back and you just made another $10. Yeah. But you lose seventy five cents. You make that's why yeah. Christopher Lloyd makes a joke of like, oh, so you make nine twenty five yeah. every hour or whatever. Yeah. Christopher Lloyd also somewhere in this scene. Yeah, he's present at this barista. He's somewhere. Yeah, I didn't recognize. And so, him, but. like, we're not we're not sure. Like, did he did Steve Buscemi get the money or like how did the money transfer? There's no transfer. We're there just getting no tra- introduced to three of our characters here. Yeah, we then follow Steve Buscemi outside. He goes back, presuming to his car. he has the twenty, which he doesn't. Right. He goes out to his car, and then Christopher Lloyd shows up. Yes. Who oh. is so good in this movie. So fucking good. Oh. Light is playing, he, he's literally playing De Niro from Heat, where he's just like this like veteran criminal. But better? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Christopher Lloyd's just like, that was a nice trick. 975, I'm looking for a partner. Yeah, he's like, yeah, like you're about that rate, you're probably going to make what? Like $300 in a day? Yeah. What if I told you to make 3000 in a day? Yeah. He's like, what you want from me, pal? Like, I yeah. just met you fucking today. It's yeah. like, I don't want anything to do with you. And then he uh, somehow he, like, says, like, oh, if you travel with me, I'll give you some life lessons yeah. and all that stuff. And we'll make a lot of money. And it's like, I don't know about that, man. He's like, yeah. well, if you're in, meet me at this place at dark. I'm like, okay. Okay, yeah. And so Buscemi drives off. And then there's a quick cut scene. Is there? The kid in the bakery. Not bakery, but he's making some stuff at this home. Yes, we cut to a kid at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he's talk, and he's like a wannabe chef, I guess. And he's talking to his girlfriend Be- on the phone. Sorry, I missed something. So after that engagement with Steve Buscemi and Christopher Lloyd, the psychic lady walks out yes. with an envelope. Yes. And she puts an envelope in a mailbox. The mailman takes it out. This all happens after the Steve Buscemi Christopher mm-hmm. Lloyd thing. And then we follow oh, this yeah, mail truck. Oh, yeah, I forgot, truck. because while Steve Buscemi and Lloyd are talking, mm-hmm. we see a mail truck pull Yep, up. yep, yep. And then the mail truck delivers an uh, envelope to this house in the suburban yeah. neighborhood. With a fun shot where we go through a mailbox, or like a mail slit in the, in yeah, the yeah. front door. This movie has some decently okay shots. Yeah, it's, it's, it's shot pretty decently. Yeah. That's why I really want to know the budget, because it's like, you got great cast, it's, yeah. you know, decent lighting, and like it wasn't, it doesn't it's look fine. terribly like an indie. So, but yeah, we get to this young boy. Boy. And he's, like, talking about the dinner he wants to make for his birthday tonight to his girlfriend. Yeah, but he... But the thing they need is white white wine. White wine. And they're, like, 15. And he calls... His girlfriend calls. Yeah. They're all, like, 15 at this point. So his girlfriend calls, like, I'm sorry, my dad ended up not giving me the money. It's like, oh, but we need white wine. And as he's talking to his girlfriend, he opens, like... Uh, the envelope yeah. and there's the twenty dollar bill. And he's like, we got money, we can get white with, wine with a with a little writing on the twenty dollar bill. It says, "Love, Grandma." Yeah. So that's where the twenty dollar bill exchange yeah. came from, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So he's like, "Oh, I know where we can get the white wine." It's like, I just got money from my grandma. Yeah. So, cut it, back to. Well, we cut to Fraser at some point right around here again. Yeah. And it's established he and Anna call it off. Yeah. Yeah. It's like kind of weirdly done. I don't remember this scene that much, but I know what you're talking. But he's established about. as like being single now, and he's like helping. Lo- he's helping people move now. He's like a two guys in a truck mover. God, yeah, because isn't this David Schwimmer introduced? No, here? we meet David Schwimmer later. But I thought he helped David Schwimmer move. Oh, something. he does help David Schwimmer. Yeah, move. he yes. helps him move into like an apartment. And then or we something. don't see David Schwimmer again for an hour. Well, and we don't see David Schwimmer and Brendan Fraser together ever yes. again. This movie gets a little too interlocked, and that's where I get confused. Again, all little vignettes yeah. would have been better, personally. Mm-hmm. Imagine if it was made in the 30s and you have like all the 1930s stars 
like the Humphrey Bogart short film. But like it starts with like a Charlie Chaplin sh- short at the beginning, and then yeah. it goes to like Buster Keaton, and then the Marx Brothers, yeah. and then like it goes to like some sort of given it to the Marx Brothers. Well, and then it just keeps going to like all these different like yeah. radically famous 1930s yeah. actors, silent movie, and all that shit. Dude, I've been such a bang, bang. Yeah. fatty Arbuckle. Oh my god! Oh my god! Mm. Okay, Dude, it's so good. Uh, okay. So, yeah, the Brendan Fraser moving David Schwimmer in, he, that's where okay, he's in. So, we life. never see the actual, like, breakup because this, even this Wikipedia Correct. article whispers, uh, Anna apparently breaks the engagement. Yeah. Um. So, we see... So, Over a fucking $20 bill, yeah. which, by the way, he's like, it's not just yeah. any $20 bill, it's my dad's $20 bill. It's like, your dad got the $20 bill from a fucking baker five minutes ago, and so don't tell me it's a special $20 Fraser bill. Fraser fucked it all up. Well, I don't give a shit. There was no intrinsic value in that $20 bill in the moment when it was handed to Fraser. He got, he got so grumpy He about could it. have handed her any $20 bill and been like, crumple it up, crumple it up. Yeah. Here's this $20 bill and pass it off. Mm-hmm. The fuck? Get out of here. I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> it's so pissed. It's getting really heated. It's so stupid. Anyway, um, I'm not mad at the movie. I'm not mad at the writing. I'm not even mad at the performances. Well, maybe I am mad at the performance because it performed very well. On how stupid the reason is. Yes, for this whole thing to collapse. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we're out of the Fraser recap. Yes. And back to Buscemi. And yeah, Lloyd. we're back to Buscemi and Lloyd, who are going around in the robbing convenience stores and liquor stores. Oh my god, you can't just sum it up like one well, fucking. How phrase. else are you supposed to su- like? So Bouche- it's really fun, but not a lot happens. Oh my god, but the the not a lot, you know, quality over quantity, Jeff. They rob three stores. Not that's, a lot happens. That's what happens. But what happens in those three robberies is gold, my dude. Well, okay. Christopher Lloyd's very good in these. He's so good. So what happens? See, Buscemi pulls up in his car. Christopher Lloyd gets in, yes. and he's like, "Yeah, well, I never, I thought about, it. I might not come back." And he's like, uh, "Life lesson number one, which was, I'm looking at the IMDb quotes because I think that's the only quotes they have in this section are like the life lessons. Uh, not as bad, blah blah blah. Oh, I, I don't know. What what does the Wikipedia say? Life lesson number one is what? What does the Wikipedia say what life lesson number one is? Um, it doesn't. Fuck. Yeah, it tells him like three life lessons. Yeah. Life lesson number two is something with the whiskey. Life lesson number three is quit while you're ahead. What's life lesson yeah. number one? I can't remember. Ah, uh, shit. That's really bad. should have wrote that down. Yeah, but, but were... I wrote Christopher Lloyd's a hoot. He is a hoot. Yeah. And so they, they go to their first convenience store and he hands him like, pick one. Sawed yeah. off shotgun or the pistol. Yeah. He takes the pistol. He takes the shot off shotgun. Buscemi does. Yes. So they go into the store and um, Linda hunts there. Yeah. And, and she's trying to buy a lottery. She's ticket. trying to buy a lottery ticket with the numbers, the serial yeah. number of the $20 bill yeah. that she had earlier. And as she does that, Christopher Lloyd's like, how's the night going, ma'am? And he's like, oh, it's going good. I'm feeling pretty lucky. And he's like, it's like, oh, that's good. It's like, how's it going for you? It's like, oh, I'm feeling lucky and pretty too. Pulls out the pistol and aims it at the cashier. It's like, Oh well, maybe tonight's not the lucky night, and then mm-hmm. Linda Hunt leaves. So then he hold, he's holding up the cashier at gunpoint. So is Steve Buscemi. And he's yeah. like, "All right, give me all the money out of the register," and he gets all the money. Christopher Lloyd just walks out, and then he's like, "And get me that bottle of whiskey yeah. too while you're at it." And so they get in the bottle yeah. of whiskey, get in the car, and go. Steve Buscemi is really hyped up, adrenaline. It's like, "Yeah, that was and great." He's just sipping from the whiskey, and, and then Lloyd and takes grabs the it. He's like, "What are you doing?" Like, life lesson number two, and throws it out the yeah. window. Don't drink and drive. I right, guess. I guess. I guess that's what it was. Yeah. He doesn't say what it is. He just yeah. throws it. Maybe life lesson number yeah. two is if you have any bottles in the car, throw them out. Yeah. <laughs> and they they rob another convenience store, or they rob a few more and they get five thousand dollars. Well, the second one, what it's a smaller convenience store, yeah. and there were some people inside. Yeah. And he gets like so he 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 gets over. He holds the lady up at gunpoint. Steve Buscemi, he's a lookout. Yeah. Says there's some people coming. He's like, it's okay. Let them in. Let them in. Yeah. And so the people come in, and he pulls out his gun. It's like, uh, we're going to need you face down on the floor, please. Yeah. It's like, please, yeah, I want you to see my face. And, and then, then Shemi points out that the cashier's going for the alarm. And then Christopher Lloyd shoots her. Yeah. He, drop of a hat, he's ready to rock and roll. And Steve Shemi's like, what the fuck? You yeah. shot her. And Lloyd comes over, and he's like, it's not your money. Why'd you even yeah. do it? And then they leave. Yeah. Ooh. It's good. He's very good Ooh. in this movie. So good. Just every delivery. It's your face right now. It's incredible. I just love it. So then we get to convenience store number three, yes. which is the intersection. 
Yes. Of the twenty dollar bill. Yes, because the the kids come. Yeah, the kid and his girlfriend. Yeah, and they have their and they're trying to get people to buy white wine for them. Yeah. Um, and the first group, they've it's like two guys take the money. Right. Um. Or they don't take them. Oh, so they take the money. What happens is like Steve Buscemi and Lloyd are like, they're saying like, oh, we got to do another one. And Chris was like, no, that's yeah, it. We shot like, somebody. The risk yeah. goes up from two to 20. It's like, no, no, no. We got to do one more. Just one more. And he's like, all if right. If you well, do it, I'm not going in. Right. If you do it, you do it alone. I'm not going in. So then they park their cars. Yeah. Meanwhile, the kids show up in a truck is yeah. there and two guys come out and the kids trying to get the guys to buy them the it's wine. like let me do this the older guys love talking to me or whatever so the girlfriend goes up it's like hi like we're trying to my boyfriend's turning 22 and it's like that kid can't be over 15 yeah. it's like our tribe minus five or whatever yeah. so she hands them the 20 it's like, all right we'll see what we can do so they go into the store they get some bottles of wine yeah and the, the cashier's me like you're buying it for the kid the little girl who's standing in the parking lot right now yeah yeah and, takes the wine back yeah they come out and they give her the 20 back it's like sorry they yeah. you know we couldn't do that so then meanwhile steve buscemi comes in and he points the solid off shotgun at the guy and he's like i need all the money it's like there is no money there's a two christopher lloyd sees all the commotion happening yeah. inside and he goes he in. goes in but before he goes in he gets interrupted by the kid he says hi like if you could my girlfriend and i are trying to buy some white wine yeah. it's like you know this was against the law and then he takes the 20 <laughs> and he takes 20 dollars and goes in he walks in. See Buscemi still like yelling at this guy. It's like I want all the money. I don't buy that bullshit. And he's like, he's not lying to you. It's it a convenience store. Automatically goes underground. Yeah, it's why they can't give you change bigger than a twenty or whatever. Yeah. So eventually, he's like, I'm very sorry for all this inconvenience. And then he takes a bottle of wine, comes back. And he, they walk out, and he throws champagne at the kids and says, uh, "It's like I got you champagne instead." Yeah. And then they, and then Steve Buscemi's trying to drive the, you know, start the yeah. car, and it's perfect comedic cinematic not, not timing on. of it not turning on. There's some sirens coming down. And Chris, like, cool, cool as a brick. Comes so in. cool. And he's like, try it again. Yeah, and it turns on. <laughs> Fucking wizard. <laughs> yeah. He's and he has the $20 in his breast pocket. Literally the angel from Angels in the Outfield. Yes. I swear to God. <laughs> so um, they start driving. And he's like, pull over to this lot right here. And they pull into this, like, used car lot. And they duck down. And it's presumed that they've been ducked down there for, like, maybe yeah. a few hours or whatever. So then they duck back up and he's like, all right, so, uh, you know, next time tomorrow, it's like, no, this will be the last time I see you or whatever. Yeah. He's like, well, what do you mean, man? It's like, uh, I thought we were partners. And it's like, you are not professional. It's yeah. like, to tell you the truth, I just needed you for your car. So they wouldn't run my license plate. Yeah. He's like, you motherfucker. And he's like, yeah. And then he points the, the shot off sock gun gets pointed at Christopher uh, Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd. It, we forgot something earlier where, Buscemi pulled off two slugs at the register thinking yeah. it would open the register and get cash, yeah. which is important for this scene. Because he points the gun at Lloyd and Lloyd's like, you wasted your shots in the convenience store. And, and then, then he shoots Buscemi. And pops shoots him. Buscemi. Buscemi dies. He has the $20 in his pocket and blood drips onto it. Yeah. And then we cut to a police precinct. Yes. Where the $20 is being locked up in evidence. But first off, can we just... Round of applause for Christopher Lloyd, Steve Buscemi, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Because this movie what? does not uh, achieve those heights. Because that is a really fun sequence, and the movie kind of just doesn't achieve that again. But aren't we so thankful yes, for that we just got a little the, bit of it? We got a little bit of that. That was great. Good, good, good yes. stuff. We get William H. Macy in an utterly like thankless <laughs> two-scene role. Listed on IMDb as property clerk. <laughs> yes. He is just like an anxious property clerk. Yeah. And we, we're back with Elizabeth Shue and her boyfriend, David Schwimmer. Mm-hmm. And they come to claim a box of items at the pre- precinct from evidence. Why? Not explained. <gasps> Wait, was it because of something that got stolen? I think that there was something with like, it was related to the robbery of some kind that some things were stolen and they think they might have like been turned into the police precinct or something like that. I cannot remember. I don't remember either, but I just know they were given yeah. a box of like yeah of items of items, and the twenty dollar bill had slipped, fallen into it. had fallen into it from the evidence locker. So <laughs> now they're driving. They have the twenty dollars, and it like floats out the back of their car. You miss the whole like she tells her dad she wrote a story in the newspaper article. Well, that happens after this because she doesn't have the twenty at that point, but we still keep following her story for some reason. Are we sure about that? Yes, I'm reading this incredibly overlong description. Right it now. slips out before she tells her father about. Yes, I believe so. Huh. Actually, you know, 
Are Am you, I right? Are you right? Am I, think, I right? I think, I think you I'm might right. be right and that this just does not include. Yes, this is just simply not include the. Um... Jeff making corrections on the Wikipedia page yeah. for 20 bucks plot. Yeah, this just does not include that. Um, okay, so they do go. She gets an article written in the newspaper, short story. They, she goes in, she tells her parents. Thinking her of it to be a celebration. Yeah, her mom was really excited. Her dad doesn't care because he didn't, he didn't support like, her. He's like, I didn't pay dogs. all this college tuition for you to write something that was useless or whatever. Yeah. This means nothing. And she gets yeah. back in her car with David Schwimmer, who's with her. Yeah. Did we say that earlier, that David yes. Schwimmer was with her? Yes, we've okay. established this. Um, this is where the movie, like, this episode is just kind of us trying to recount what's happening. Because there's so many freaking characters in this movie. Yeah, there are. Yeah. And so... They get in the car and they speed off and she's crying. She's like, what if we, what do you, can you come over? I don't want to be alone right now. It's like, oh yeah, that's sure. By the way, I'm impersonating David Schwimmer, not her. (laughs) And David Schwimmer's just like, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it sounds great. It's like, do you want to spend the night? And he's like, uh, sure. $20 slips out. No, $20 slips out as she says, maybe that's not such a good idea. Maybe that's not such a good idea. And she kind of just like suplexes discount Ray Romano. And, uh, (laughs) yeah. Um, the money floats around. I somewhat lose track of the 20 at this point. Yes. So it goes to a homeless family who uses it to buy groceries. And it's Got then it. given as change at the grocery store to a woman who then yeah. uses it to snort, snort coke. cocaine. Yes. She uses it to snort cocaine. That and, was the point. And then she pays for the drugs she snorted with it. That was the moment I was waiting for. Yes. When the first thing I saw from the ATM, that $20 bill, and I knew we were going to follow the $20 bill, yeah. the thing, the first thing I said was, that bitch better be used to snort cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it, it was. was. And it was. Oh, and so, thank you, Kevin Rosenfeld. Yeah. I am so thankful for that moment. <laughs> and so it's used to snort cocaine, and then it's the, the drugs are paid for with it. Yeah. And the drug dealer also runs a youth camp. Yeah. Uh, I love that bit. Because, <laughs> the, yeah, the drug dealer, like, it cuts to him, like, putting it in like a little dissolvable plastic capsule, hiding it inside of a fish, and then cut to him doing this contest with the kids yeah. to catch these fish, and whoever like got the fish yeah. with the thing inside won the prize. Yes. Here's the thing. It went inside a fish. Yes, after being used to snort cocaine. And it was a dissolvable capsule. So when he finds it, it literally rolls out, and it's a slimy-ass $20 bill, and this kid gets it, and it's like, yeah. And I'm like, Ugh. yeah, it's a gross twenty dollar bill, disgusting twenty dollar. If this twenty dollar bill was sentient, what do you think would be happening at this point? Ah! 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> so this kid walks off with this twenty dollar bill. There's a really nice shot here uh-huh. of these two kids just walking in silhouette against electrical lines. Yeah, and it's like a long, like thirty second take of just like silhouettes walking and talking. Yeah, and I was like, oh, this is a nice, fun little artistic shot in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then we don't learn what these kids' names are, and one of them, like, he uses, he goes to a bowling alley. Yes. And has it converted to quarters. Yes, in and the he register. Uses it to make a phone call to a sex hotline. Because they find, like, a bunch of cards with phone numbers on it yeah. or something. And then there's, like, some business... The bowling... Brendan Fraser's in this bowling alley, isn't he? He is drunk in this bowling alley. But not related to the scene in yeah. any shape he's or form. He's just there getting slammed. Yeah. And someone thinks he's homeless and tries to give him money. Yeah. So this guy talks to the register oh. and he's like, oh yeah, we're going out for something, whatever, if you want to come with. Yeah. And the owner gives them the $20. Yeah. And he's like, no, it's all good. And then he kisses him up. goodbye. And says, take this and have a good night. This does say the bowling alley owner gives the bill to his lover. Yeah. For 1993, yeah. that's pretty progressive. Yeah, that's fun. I like that. And it doesn't point it. It doesn't point fingers at it like ha ha ha. This yeah. is funny. Or, it's like just a gross. casual gay. This romance. is a very casual gay romance, which for 1993 is yeah pretty progressive. Yeah, which is you know it's nice to see that stuff start to appear in movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, at this time. Yeah. Um, he gives it to his lover, and the guy goes outside and he sees Brendan Fraser collapse next to the trash, and he tries to give him the twenty to buy a meal. Yeah. And Fraser's like, like, no, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. not that bad. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, um, get better, man. Just gives him some encouraging words and goes. Where does he go next, Jeff? Because I uh, found this part pretty funny. <laughs> so goes to a bingo place. He does go to play bingo. Um, this, who the frick is Sam? Oh, yeah, yeah, Sam, Sam, Sam. 
um, is it's is Elizabeth. Fraser. It's Emily's dad. Yeah, Eliz- she he goes to a church where there's a bingo game going on. He pays for a single like bingo card yeah. with the twenty dollars. He pays for four or pays for four. Yeah, and then he, he goes in line, and then Emily's dad, the yeah. guy who yelled at her about being a worthless newspaper yeah. person, shows up, and he's like, "Oh, I only have a hundred. Could you break it?" And then he's given the twenty dollars yeah. and change for you know the bingo. So then it's that dude, the lover guy from the bowling alley, and Emily's dad sitting side by side. Yes. And then he's like, B41, bingo! Yeah. And Emily's dad Bruce just drops dead. Drops heart dead. Yeah. Heart attack. I do want to say the priest is played by Spalding Gray in this, um, which is very funny. Spalding Gray. He's like a monologist um, actor. Oh. He's, he's the priest in this. He, he did some really good stuff. I'm trying to think how I might know him from. I cannot think of anything you might know him from unless you are like, unless you know his stuff. Um, he did a really good movie called Swimming to Cambodia that mm. everyone should watch. Okay. Um, it's just him delivering a monologue for two hours. Mm. All right. But anyway, um, he's playing the priest. Mm-hmm. Um, and the dad has a heart attack. And then there, you know, Emily Shue or Elizabeth Shue gets the $20 back because she gets her dad's possessions. Possessions. So the money's now back with her. Yeah. They go to the funeral, which is played for like slapstick comedy. Charm. Oh, yeah. Because Spalding Grace giving the, the speech the, and like there's a, the, 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 <clears throat> a scissor left lifting they the... They put him in like a mormatorium yeah. more than like a grave site. Yeah, and so like there's a scissor lift that's to lift the coffin up and these two guys just like shove it like <clears throat> into the... Yeah, site. it is played like slapstick. Yeah. Um, and then, so she has the twenty. Yeah, and she then she goes to a bar. Well, she goes to the airport. Well, where's the? She, she talks with her mom. She rips it up eventually. Well, she, ta- she talks with her mom. Yeah, and says that her dad originally wanted to be a writer and do something with his life. And right. He was just jealous at her, and that's where his anger came from. So she decides she's going to go live her life and go to Europe. What what point does she rip up the twenty dollars? Well, she's at the airport at a yeah. bar at the airport. Yes, and her she meets her brother there, who's there for some reason. Okay, and he, she gives him the twenty, and she says, "Find the um, the famous movie that's written on this bill." And he's like, "Is it? Um, thank, love you, Grandma." And she's like, "No." And he's like, "Okay, well, what is it?" And she's like, "I'm gonna go to the bathroom, figure it out when I come back. Tell me." And then we also learn that Brendan Fraser is at this bar at the airport. What's he doing at the airport? He's flying to Spain to get. He, no, he's there with um, his girl, his father-in-law to be, explaining his reason right. why he, why the relationship got called off. Yeah, right. And the the guy's like, you know, I was gonna give you more than the twenty. Like, yeah, we, I was making like a philosophical point when I gave you that, and you were just too fucking stupid to figure it out. Yeah. Um, and Brendan Fraser's like, you know, you win some, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but they shake hands, they make amends. And then we go back to Elizabeth Shue, who comes back, and the brother's like, I don't know what movie. And she rips up the 20 and says, Gone with the Wind, because it blows away. Oh. Um, that's nice. I, I didn't register yeah. that part, so I didn't remember it. But that, then, hearing that now, it's And good. then she starts walking, and then she trip, she bumps into Brendan Fraser, and they start talking. He mm. helps her pick her stuff up, and they realize they're both going on a plane to Spain. And they walk off down the departures terminal together. Hopeful um, for and a it's ex- better and like future. the idea is like oh they'll find love together somewhere else yeah this movie was about bringing those two people together and then the end appears on screen but it is not well, over it is not over because the end like it R- like or rewinds itself R- and Linda Hunt crawls in and like gets all the little <laughs> clippings of the twenty dollar bill it's like <laughs> <laughs> yes my master yeah she grabs all the 20 she grabs all the bits she tapes them together she goes to like a bank deposit place yeah. and like can you is this good yeah and and she's like, like well technically it, it we only need like 51 percent tender yeah. so like technically that's good yeah, it's legal so she it's like she turns that in gets a brand new fresh 20 dollar bill she's it's like, like well what, what are you gonna do, do with, with this? it and it's like well we burn it <laughs> it's like good he's like that that bill brought because no- we missed the point where it's like she catches the numbers of that yeah. ripped up dollar bill and they read the lottery winnings and, and it was yeah. the numbers can we and tell she's you, this like, movie is ostensibly <sighs> about a 20 dollar bill that just ruins everyone's fucking life that it, <laughs> it gets brendan fraser and um emily emily or, or elizabeth shoe 
It gets it gets it Brendan kills Fraser. It kills him. It kills two people. <laughs> it kills two people. It kills two people in this movie. Yeah. Is responsible for several robberies, underage drinking, breaks up a marriage. Crazy. 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 Yeah. Um but yeah, she uh she gets a new 20 and then goes off to buy a lottery ticket with the numbers on that 20. Yeah. Everyone gets a happy ending. And that's the end of that's the movie. That's the end. Con- very confusing movie to recap. Thank, yeah. thank you to whoever wrote this overlong Wikipedia. Yeah, it helped us out a lot. Uh, do you have any post text? Like, we... So this movie does nothing for Fraser. Right. It's just like it's one of his movies that gets forgotten about at this point. What, what did it make? I mean, this movie did not make much. This movie's total box office grossings were um, $89,000. Damn. Probably less than it cost with this cast, significantly less. Yeah, it's got to be at least over a mil, yeah. right? And so, very strange. Huge um, hit. And I feel like for Fraser at this time, I feel like his notoriety, for lack of a better term, within the popular culture, kind of jumps from Encino Man and School Ties to Airheads. Yeah. I feel like this and the other movies, and the movie we're covering next week, are fully like not things that are discussed. And do you think it's more like... There, it's kind of a blessing in the sense that like these movies don't do anything for him, yeah. good or bad. They're movies he just happens to be in, right? Rather than like Brendan Fraser movies, right? It, uh, his career doesn't necessarily take a hit for it. Yes. So, like the what these movies are are very much what, um, for a great example, like Hanover Street, Force Ten from Navarone, and the Frisco Kid are for Harrison Ford. Yeah, because those all come out between Star Wars, Empire, and Raiders. Yeah. Those aren't Harrison Ford movies. Right. Those are just like... Movies he's in. He, he is present in. Yeah. So, but, you know, just to kind of recap, I mean, it had some thought plot points that I liked. I mean, you saw me clap for the Christopher Lloyd, yes. Steve Buscemi bit. That was really, really good. And, yeah, I just thought it was a cute concept, very foundational yeah. script. Like, not much else was done with it. This gets um, decent reviews when it comes out. Mm-hmm. It has a, it currently has a seventy five on Rotten Tomatoes, which is not bad. It only has like eight reviews though, so yeah, it, it's one of those Rotten Tomatoes things where like someone maybe just goes through every like twenty years and updates the listings. Yeah, Roger Ebert liked it, said it was kind of freeing, um, just a movie where it didn't really have a point to it. It was just interesting idea. Yeah. Um, he also said he was so engrossed by Christopher Lloyd's performance that he also forget that he forgot what the movie was about. <laughs> me too. No, me too. Because I would just watch him. I would watch a feature length movie about a young criminal played by Steve Buscemi and Christopher Lloyd as his older mentor. I'd watch a ninety minute movie just about that thousand percent aspect. Yeah, which almost hinders the movie because it's yeah. like you just want more of that and then it's gone. You're yeah. Like, oh, okay. But you know, it's a it's a fun little movie. It's very you know, it comes from the '30s, so it feels of a piece with like the the films of Frank Capra. Mm-hmm. Um, which maybe feels a little out of touch in the 90s. Yeah. Like, it doesn't quite fit the vibe. But, you know, I, I enjoyed it well enough. Um, I am not unhappy to have watched it. Yeah. I would say it's pretty similar. But I would say it, doesn't, it didn't really do much for me. Or... I wouldn't watch it again, like, yeah. willingly. If anything, I would show I would not the, seek this movie. Though. I would show them the Christopher Lloyd Steve Buscemi bit, yeah. and that'd be it. Yeah. Like, if I could get that it excerpt in, like, a little tiny speck. Yeah. Yeah. You all right? Hmm. So that's, that's basically my thoughts on this movie. Basically, my thoughts on this movie too. Yeah. All right. Um, you almost think you almost think like you know as we're going back in time with this Jeff that we're getting younger and younger yeah. and younger and younger it's almost like next week we're going to be talking about the motion picture younger and younger, which you folks should definitely tune in to check out, starring Donald, Donald Sutherland, Sutherland and who is Brandon not Frank. aged for better or worse since, then. <laughs> since that movie the movie was born the way he looked in he this looks movie exactly the same in that movie yeah but yeah make sure to check in next week for our, our episode on the motion picture younger and younger uh, thank you for listening this week please remember to rate review and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on as a reminder we are available on Spotify Podcasts, Google, Google Podcasts, Podcasts, and, and YouTube, YouTube. You can find us on Twitter or Instagram at Travolting Pod. You can email us travoltingpodcast at gmail.com, uh, r slash Travolting on Reddit. Find me on Twitter at Jeff W. Sweeney. And you can find me on Instagram at Stuart Elmer 95 And then, as always, special thanks to Rebecca Johnson for our graphic design and Michael Van Bodegum Smith for the theme music that is now taking you out. Wait one second. <laughs>
Oh, God. We didn't rank the hair. Oh, shit. <laughs> Cue the music. What? Okay, wow, Jeff, you cued the hair ranking on this one. Yes, because we almost cut the episode off without we doing this. We almost did. So I think his hair changes a little bit in this movie, doesn't it? He gets it? all more disheveled. Yeah, it gets very... The audience right now is like ready, was like turning their podcast app off. <laughs> They're like, right. wait, there's They're like, more. Wait a minute, wait a wait, 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 wait a minute. Uh, so I'm just scrolling through some photos, trying to get like a good visual of Brendan Fraser. I got some at the beginning of the movie, but I wanted to see what he looked like at the end yeah. of the movie. Um, always pulling the list in yeah, front of me. I do like a David Schwimmer hair ranking. Mm. He's got some nasty locks in this movie. Oh my God. So yeah. many fucking photos. Um, so I mean... I don't know. I'm, ha I'm having a rough time trying to find the, find any like decent photos. It's like his normal hair. It is. Oh, here we go. Okay, I got something. Um, yeah, it's his normal hair. A little comb over, a little bushy. Yeah. So put this uh, above Child of Darkness, Child of Light, below Guilty Until Proven Innocent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. going to be a strong, solid number three. Solid number three. Got yeah, it. I think that feels pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that feels fine. I guess we're committing to the hair ranking now. I think we are, unless you have. I something. can't it, find anything. Can't think else. of anything else. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll do the hair ranking. It's our it's a bit. It's a good bit. Yeah, it is a good bit. Okay. So now with that, special thanks as always to Rebecca <laughs> Johnson for our graphic design and Michael Van Bodegem Smith for the theme, theme music, music that's now taking, taking you out. out. Bye. Bye.